All right, guys, let's talk about templates, more importantly, writing templates, and we might as well just jump right in because there is a lot to cover on my writing template. So what we do is we will open a new project. This is the template that I've made for this video. And as you can see, maybe you can see I have all my synths set up because I want to show you how I also go about using my hardware synths and all that stuff since we're going over this stuff right now. Might as well cover that as well, right? So that's kind of fun. Uh, I'm going to just do, open it in this folder here. And in just a second, it will load up. It's loading up the invasion. I've got that um, all set up. And again, the the great thing about this, we've done videos where we've showed how to do a quick mix or whatever, you know, get, get whatever you want out of your kit. Um, but you don't have to set it up every time, you know, you, once you have it, at least in Cubase, which is what we're going to be using here, um, you could just save it as a template and then there you go. So, uh, and then you can recall that anytime. This one, I have a beat preloaded into it just so that we have a quick little starting point and, uh, Let's just jump right in. So let's talk about the guitars first. I do something kind of interesting, a little bit different. And this is a setup that I'll use if I'm trying to write and I want to preserve the takes or keep them, maybe use them for the final product, but I don't want to necessarily be stuck with the tone. And I don't want to necessarily have to reamp either. So I'm giving myself options here. What I'm actually doing with the guitars here is not only capturing a DI, which I'm doing with a J48 radio box right there. So that's the guitars going to that. That's going to the Axe FX currently. And the Axe FX patch I've got going, it's right here. Which you can hear. But I'm also just capturing the non cab sim tone. And I've actually got um, GGD. IRZilla going on here. So if we turn that off, in here it's grows. And to set this up, I'm actually doing a monitoring channel because what I don't want to happen is I don't want this to go through all my processing uh, through the master bus and all that because it'll just add a ton of latency it'll be unplayable. This is very playable. So uh, I can actually monitor myself here and then record onto a track. And then these also have uh, IRZilla on there. Now, the point of doing this is that I can then, after the fact, change the cab sim completely. And because the cab sim affects the overall sound, you, you see I'm even using a different one than the one I'm monitoring. But it doesn't matter. You, I can do whatever I want. Um, then after the fact, if I want to change that sound, I can I can do that. And it... it, it those of you who play around with IRs know how much of a difference it can make. So rather than reamping the whole thing, you might actually be able to just play around with the IRs and get what you want out of it. But I'm also capturing a DI of everything. So if I were to record, um, like just take a look here. I've actually got a DI and a non cab sim uh, committed version. So if we listen to what's actually been recorded, but obviously I'm gonna put the cab sim on because it sounds proper. So now um, what I've got here, and you can uh, create a little folder. This is actually really uh, useful with Cubase. So I've got all these folders created here. Um, and if you click this button, or I think hit K, it's a shortcut, you can do group editing. So now whatever I do to one will be done to the other. There's one thing that's very handy about this, which you can't really see as well on something like this, but let's say, let's say I do like a, a, a rhythm sound. Like something like this. So. <laughs> So now you can see, I actually have this DI here, and it's and it's very visible. Um, so you can actually use this DI to edit, because obviously with the distortion, it, 
kind of just looks like a brick wall waveform. But the DI is very, very, you can see all the transients. So it's very clear. So it makes it very easy to edit and see what's going on here. If I need to uh, slip these things around, you know, I can do that very handily. Um, and this stuff is great when you're, when you're editing. And as you can see, the top one is adjusting with it. So that's awesome. So that's something that, that I think is great. I have the DI there ready to go and it will be edited. And if I end up reamping that, I'll have the edited DI that's going through and reamp reamping. But if I don't, I also have the the thing right here. The the DI is muted, obviously. You're not you're not here. It's going to a DI channels output, which is all the way down. So that's uh that's pretty cool. That's that's what's going on with the guitars. Um one other thing I've got going here, which I've only halfway got going because uh this is outputting to you guys is Sonarworks. Uh, I'm a big fan of this stuff. Um, right now I have it on for my headphones. And um, of course, every every DAW is very different. So this is how I do it in this one. Um, so what it's, Sonarworks is basically correcting whatever you're referencing. You, you know, I have my room and monitors corrected uh, with, with a microphone that's back there that I measured, you know, and I've got, I've got my room actually measured here. Um, but uh, you can see you can see how it's correcting it or what what my room looked like, and it's basically trying to make it flat. So it's very very handy. Um, one thing that I'm doing as well because my headphones have uh, have a correction that's specific to them is I'm actually running a, sp a specific correction for the headphones simultaneously with this with a specific correction for the speakers. So that might sound kind of complicated. This is maybe advanced for some people watching, but for those of you who appreciate. Um, a mix that translates. This is super useful. I, I absolutely swear by sonar work stuff. It won't fix a bad room, but if you have treatment, if you have good monitors and you use that as the last step, you can get something that really helps your mixes translate everywhere. Um, so again, I have this off because it would mess up the sound for you guys. Cause unless you were listening on my speakers in my room, it would be correcting it. And it would basically sound like super bassy and cut out a lot of the mids, you know, it'd be the inverse of this or no, sorry, the inverse of, uh, of that, you know, um, though they, they are kind of similar. Um, oh, and it also fixes the phase, uh, as you can see the left and right. So when you actually turn it on, it sounds like your mix is getting wider. Anyways, I'm rambling about this, uh, a lot, but it, it's super handy. And the reason that I'm talking about control room is because one of the things, the, the way that a lot of people and the way I used to do it is I would just put it on my master bus as the last thing, you know, after your, your limiter. Um, and then completely forget to take it off when I'm exporting and then it completely ruins everything. Then your mix is terrible because it's got that correction printed on it, that correction for your specific room or headset. So uh, with Cubase, what's handy is you have this sort of control room that goes after everything and it's separate. And then that way you actually, uh, you, you yourself are hearing it, but it will never export with that. And, you know, in the case, this is actually why I wear the headphones so I can hear the corrected sound but what's going to you guys is is uh just the the pure sound itself that way i can reference what i need while we're doing this anyway so that's a cool little thing and that's something that i have saved in my template as well it makes it super useful so i can just sort of jump in and you know everything should sound pretty pretty accurate um obviously like i've got this invasion kit uh loaded here um with with a setup and the mapping that i like so this makes it super handy for just being able to jump in and start programming. You know, I have my my own personal map that I like to use here. Um, I had a little beat preloaded just so I'd have something to jam to so I wouldn't have to program in front of you guys. But um, from here, why don't we play around with this? Let's play around with this and we see where we land. So you can see I'm just recording to this. Let's try to click on. Let's get 
the other side going real quick. So we've got some parts here now. So I also have the same thing set up with the bass. And here, um, normally because I have this in a, uh, it, it, it's routed through another input, I could just have the bass plugged in the whole time. However, when I'm trying to keep the takes, I also take the DI, just in case I need to reamp it. So, let's track some bass. Okay, cool. So that's done. Now we can play around with some other stuff. So this is where I've got my synth set up. I have this one routed through the Axe FX. So I've had to get a little creative here because I don't have enough inputs on my <laughs> interface. So let's see what's going on. Uh, I'm actually running these uh, through the Axe FX because it's just handy to have a bunch of effects ready to go. So I've got an Axe FX 3 which shares duty for the guitar and the Prophet 6 over here. This has uh, some pedals going in front. Right now I have a Boss DD200, a Strymon Volante, and a Boss RV500 for reverb. And it's uh, just routed. I can add reverb here if I want. But we don't need to use that right now. We got a little bit of compression. Kind of makes the delays pop through. Uh, and on this side, I've got my sub 37 and I've got my uh, Korg Prologue. And the cool thing I've done with the sub 37 is I've got it through this uh, T Rex replicator, which is a tape echo, an actual tape echo. Sounds pretty cool. And then um, this I've just got. So that's just going through there. It's uh, going through the uh, effects loop. So the other input and into the compressor there. And again, I can uh, add reverb and delay to both of these. But, uh, or I could do it separately. You know, I can build the whole thing, but it's just, it's handy to have this as well. Um, and I can mix my pedals and mix my um, Axe FX effects, Axe FX effects. Uh, and I can mix the the various effects that I have and also do stuff in the box. So that's really handy. Um, so let's play around with a little bit of this. Uh, and this is how I have this set up. I've got, this is actually really handy because obviously if you're going to do soft synths, and I don't think I need to show you guys that stuff because you load that up. You just, you know, it, it just works. The hardware stuff uh, takes a little bit of work, but once you have it set up, and again, this is the advantage of, of using a template is that, it's just ready to go. So um, I have a MIDI track here. And let's see here. Let's 
play around with this. So what's going on here is I'm not actually committing this. This is just triggering the MIDI from the computer out to here. It's going through the effects and it's coming right back in. So I'm going to have to capture this using this track. But right now I'm just going to keep editing this as if it were an instrument. So that's pretty cool, I think. Then what we'll do is we'll just duplicate that and now we have to actually capture it. So this is where you just record. So, this is something that's really handy. Now that I've got this MIDI, I mean, if I have a, a virtual instrument, I could just drag that there. One thing you'll want to do, obviously, is mute that, because then you'll be hearing the recorded one and it triggering in real time. So that's what we captured. Great. So now instead of muting this, I'm going to layer this. So I've got my sub 37, and rather than reaching for it all the way over there, and just copy that to the to the MIDI track there. Where is this? There we go. Alright, so that's an octave too high because of the way that's set up. So that's really loud. And let's turn on this delay there. Let's capture that, see how that sounds. Capture it all the way to the end. I love those delay trails there because it's a real tape delay, so it gets all messed up. I think you could even hear it as it was getting it. So now we can mute that. That was a, a bit louder, I think. Clip the, gain those down. What we could even do is like pan them. It's almost like we're double tracking these. Um, since they're stereo, I had them centered, but. And this one on the prologue. Got kind of a nice pad going there. So let's see if we can play around with this. Get something. It's got pretty slow attack. Whoops, wrong track. I want the MIDI first because I want to write on it. And let's see. So. off the end there just so it could fade out.
So that's pretty cool. Now we can commit this. Pretty cool. Now we will mute this, of course. Now let's listen back. And again, this is nothing amazing. I'm just showing you quickly how I have this template set up so you could be writing music immediately. I mean, I'm doing it right in front of you. Um, and it just has everything ready to go. If I at any point want to reamp this stuff, I can use the DI right here. I mean, and if I had edited any of this, you know, um, as you edit, it will edit both tracks. So that's wonderful. Um, if all I'd want to do is change the cab sound, like, like this. All I'd have to do, is just open this up. Again, this is a uh, this is a beta version, so it's a little big. Now we've got a different. Put a guitar tone on that one. And let's mess with this one a little bit. Let's see what we got. Let's do an off axis 57. Let's do like a you know, fat baby. And let's do an NTR. And this is obviously uh, much more different when you have uh, more gain. That's when you can hear the massive differences, but... So that is the basic overview of my template. Obviously, it's got all my, um, my my plugins. Like, it'll remember all that stuff. So the drums especially, you know, that's where the majority of my... That and my uh, master bus. Um, you know, I've got, uh, obviously, smash and grab on every, every channel as my compressor. I've done a video covering not only this whole thing, but also how you can get something similar using just the stock plugins. And I believe uh, Dez and Nolly did the same thing as well uh, for uh, Logic and Pro Tools, respectively. So, or actually the other way around. Anyways, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, and I've gone over the uh, master bus that I use and also gone over a master bus that you can use just using the stock plugins in Cubase. So you have all the tools to get not only all this stuff going, but to then, after you're ready, just save it as a template. Um, what I generally do, uh, this is a little pro tip for Cubase is delete all the stuff you don't want to appear again, you know, like a, a little, a little beats fine, you know, for, for reference or whatever, it'll remember your tempo, remember all your settings and everything, all your tracks, all your routing, super handy. Let me turn that off. Then, uh, one, one thing you can do is then you go to your, your pool, which is like all the, the files that it's associating with the project. Uh, you want to be careful here. I hit delete. Do not erase them. You do remove from pool. And then you can just save this as a template. Save it as the template to. Um, you have to save it as GGD template to every time. No, I'm just joking. Um, and there you go. Now you can recall that whenever you do a new project. Bam. GGD template to right here. And you're ready to go again.
So, I hope that this has been useful. I hope that you guys have learned a few cool tricks from this. Um, this is something that I have refined over many years. The uh, control room thing and sonar works is something I only found out and figured out how to work for me uh, pretty recently. Um, and as I started to integrate more and more synths, I had to get creative about how I routed everything. So obviously this will be different depending on your setup and your needs. But hopefully you can learn a few cool tricks uh, and uh, make your workflow a lot simpler as you start to write more and more. Thanks so much for watching, guys.